Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Ryan, and today I'm joined by Nate, Dave, and uh, so we have a, a viewer request from Nicholas Hengsler, and he's basically talking about having a party that effectively has no warriors in it, and how to have them not be slain by like goblins and other low-level monsters at the low levels. Well, he specifically too said about bad party compositions. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, he listed off what he had, and it's like the, it's not the iconic arrangement we've, of what you're having. Yeah, party. we've talked about bar, party composition previously, and I kind of feel like that's not that's not the issue. In the end, you can't throw the same types of things at them and mm -hmm. expect it to just bounce off them. Like, oh, 40 hit points of damage. Sure, I'll take half of that because I'm raging. You know, <laughs> they don't have that option. So when they get hit with a tremendous amount of damage, they might fall down. Yeah. So there, there's two there's two two aspects of this. One is the players can't act like they're an iconic kind of party. Mm -hmm. Two, the DM isn't isn't tailoring the adventures to the party if if the, the lack of uh, warriors is a problem. Mm -hmm. Because well, for for one, too, like I also feel like depending on your party composition would determine the kind of adventures you present to your players. Not because they they lack a certain thing, but because, you know, wizards or rogues are just going to be interested in different things. They're going to have different things they want to pursue. And different tactics and things like that too in the game. Like, I would almost see this as like more of a SWAT team because they're all like very specialized sort of characters, versus like you know infantry army army infantry that's just going to like roll through a you know a line or whatever. So these are like you want to do like almost like. Green Beret, like, reconnaissance sort of adventures where they're going to have to investigate things and figure things out. They're, gonna just, they're not going to go and, uh, and make the problems into a, a nail and they're the hammer. Yeah, I would say that they're, you're also going to get a lot of they're going to want to set up. Like, they're, they're going to be, think about it, they're always going to be at a disadvantage when you bring some big bad in that's trying, that's going to hammer them. So, as much as they can, they're going to want strategy wise to set up an attack like oh here's this guy's camp we're going to surround them and then you know we're going to all attack i'm going to i'm going to drop a fireball and everybody's going to run in and like you know shoot from the from the woods and stuff and get sneak attacks and all that kind of stuff so that's what i see as being that kind of they're going to want to jump on whatever they fight Mm. And that's going to be probably their like go-to strategy, I would say. Well, especially because they're not going to be heavily armored, so they're not going to be as clanky. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So they, and you're and uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say. So like you know they ha they should have that element of surprise and stealth. Yeah, and I would also see uh, if a big bad does get to drop on them, I would think that it, it would be appropriate for them to spread and like split up and and kind of like get out of the way of it, rather than. Like it's going to be constantly chasing them and trying to attack them, rather than, uh, you know, a stand-up fight where it's like I punch you, you punch me, I punch you, you know. Like I don't see that happening as much. It's it's really hard to say too because you know based off of his uh, specific request or question, um, not knowing the actual party composition. I mean, we we do have the the composition. I think it's like a rogue, a druid. Um, yeah, it has a good amount of rogue. It has a wizard. And it's got a druid. Druid's like the beefiest person in the party. And, and, well, the rogue's got D eight now, so yeah. yeah a, a second level druid, Circle of the Moon, early levels. He he can tank the shit out of stuff. And low level oh, yeah. monsters aren't going to be I that big a deal. I don't know if he's Circle of the Moon or Circle of the Land. Okay. So if he's Circle of the Land, he's more like a wizard mm. <laughs> instead of a instead of a tank. So that 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 would be pretty much that's the tank character if it's Circle of the Moon. So, but they didn't get specific on that. So. Uh, because yeah, you know, one of the abilities of the, of the that uh, the circle of the moon has is as a bonus action every round you can just burn spells that keep healing your animal form, mm -hmm. which will keep you tankier or longer. Then you can choose something like boar, which uh, has that ability that if it gets knocked to zero hit points, it's like the it's like the half orc, but it's for the animal. Yeah, it can get so back up. It's it, kind yeah. of specific, but yeah. Yeah. So so like that's definitely well, I mean, some it, it tanking gets, ability. It takes a whole bunch of damage. It can just still be at one rather than you be out of wild shape. Well, yeah, I, I'm, what I'm saying, the board doesn't work the way the half work works. It's different. No, oh, it is. It's, yeah, it's a, it's not as good. Oh, it's like a lesser form of it. It's okay. still kind of cool, but it, right. like, there's like a hit point cap or something. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Um, but it's still kind of cool. So the druid uh, circle of the moon can actually act act as your tank. You know, depending on what the other classes are, they can kind of uh, bolster the front line through control. 
Okay. Lots of artillery. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. lots of getting behind something and, and firing. Yeah, oh, so yeah, tactics-wise, they're always going to be looking for cover, probably. Yeah, yeah like, unless so. your rogue is going to be a melee rogue. Yeah. Looking for cover, looking for bottlenecks. Maybe if they have casters, they can create the bottlenecks. Yeah, well, clouded daggers and other things that short, you know, if it's a 15-foot hallway and you want to make it so it's a 5-foot space, they're coming through. Yeah. That. Well, that, that really works, too, if you can, if the maybe circle the moon druid if he can if choose forms that have like a shove attack as yes, part of their attack into like th- you know, th- thunder, waving and thunder waves and shove attacks into into your said cloud of daggers you know to maximize that damage output so like I'm thinking about like party compositions and I'm thinking about like so sometimes like inadvertently when this happens there can also end up being like a theme like maybe the party tends to be more scholarly or maybe the party tends to be more stealthy and, you know, with those compositions, I feel like you're going to tell a different kind of story. Mm. Mm. You know, yeah. because, just because of what those characters would be after and would be pursuing. So that's another way to work around, you know, I don't have X at the party. Well, it's not as a big a deal because this party is going to do something different. Like you said, like, you know, if they're more of a commando type party, you know. Meaning they're not wearing underpants. Yes, they're not wearing <laughs> underpants. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> They're going to they're gonna be doing different things. They're going to have different different kinds of quests and missions that they're going to go on. Uh, but, you know, because you have these, like, highly specialized skills. Where when you have the Iconic Party, you do hi- have highly specialized skill, but they're dispersed amongst different specialties. Mm. If you have a party that has the same specialty, uh, or they all share a specialty, what happens is, like, that, that becomes a reoccurring theme in a lot of your adventures, I would think. And, like, say if they do, like, a mercenary type of thing, if somebody's aware, like, these are the best people that do this thing, and I need a really good team to do it, then they're going to be the people that get hired. Like, the A team, sort of, of doing Or the B team, as the case may be. And the B team. So if they've already had an adventure or two where they, you know, it gets around that they've escaped by sneaking out or they escaped by subterfuge, then that's, like, that can be, like, another tick on, on their kind of like oh well you know I'm looking like you said you're looking for adventures adventuring and this group resumes already survived yeah. this crazy thing yeah. by running by like sneaking away or sneaking away with an object or something well like all right for instance right so like, ru- rumors could have the type of people looking for specialists heading their way like you say you have a bard a monk a ranger a rogue and a druid no I, ranger though what's that no ranger why not a ranger <laughs> well to go with this there's like no, absolutely no warriors. Well, well yeah, I don't, I'm not talking about okay, a specific right. one. I'm just saying, like, that's a party composition. A ranger makes a horrible tank as far as tanks go. Yeah. Because they tend to have the lower armor class anyway. But what that composition actually gives you is a party that could be very good at stealth. Yes. Yeah, so you could do the urban, you, know, you could do the urban campaign where, the, you know, uh, where, where they're basically, you know, ro- doing the rogues thing. Mm-hmm. Where they're, you know, where they're sneaking in, stealing things. You know, what I would call the thief campaign, which, you know, in fifth edition, it's so much easier to do than previous editions. Like before, you really do, did need, uh, you know, specific classes. But now with the backgrounds, with, yeah. yeah, with the backgrounds and the different crossovers, you can actually branch out a lot. So, you know, I, I actually don't believe in bad party composition. You know, yeah, if people are playing what they want to play. It doesn't matter. That's what I was referencing our other video on party composition. is like, I mean, the conclusion I feel like was that there's no bar, bad party composition. It's just how do you want to play the game? Yeah. So everyone, you know, everyone just needs to be playing what they want to play. And as you, as the as the DM, have to figure it out. That doesn't mean kid gloves. Like you can throw the, the things you might normally throw at them. And. You know, then it's up to them to use wise tactics. Or run. Or maybe, run. Maybe sometimes that, just being run is a tactic. Foot. Yeah. Just being fleet of foot is a thing. Yeah. And uh, there's, uh, for, for from the DM angle, you also have the idea of, well, if they're, if they're low level plus low hit points, you have the idea of you can control what happens in the battle by, you know, you don't have to give the guy the standard amount of hit points. You can make it lower mid-battle if you need to. And yeah. he's like, oh yeah, he's got one hit die less worth of hit points, and so the next swing should drop him. So that'll be like one less attack against the, the party. Or you can say, well, I was going to plan a second wave of guys, but now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm just going to. They don't even, they don't, they didn't hear that noise, or they didn't exist. So you know, when the when you when a fight breaks out in a bar, well, the constable's taking a nap. 
that's supposed to be on duty, so he didn't call in extra extra people to come fight. Or, you know, the uh, the crime boss that you were going to have minions come out, well, he's actually not there, so his bodyguards aren't there either. So this is just going to be just one more bar that that's, gets, you know, a tavern brawl in it, and then you guys live through the tavern brawl. No one comes out with sharp knives trying to stab you because the crime boss isn't there. So you can kind of, like, alter what the encounter is going to be or what you've got in your mind as the encounter because it's not a video game. You can make decisions on the fly. It's not like you programmed yourself to say, okay, this second wave now must happen, but it will murder everyone. You know, so based on how the combat's going, you can kind of alter it without anybody knowing. That's up to you. Yeah. Like, if you cheat this in a GM, just don't tell your players and they'll be none the wiser and they'll still enjoy playing the game. Yeah. Like, you know, cheat in their favor. You know, there, there's, uh, you know, that absolutely works because one of the part of the question was you survivability. Know, survivability yeah. with the monsters, you could use le less of them, you know, of the monsters. Uh, I would highly recommend foreshadowing in a way to let the players know you, you want to clue them in that they shouldn't just try and do every fight as a stand-up fight. Mm. You know, you can do that through foreshadowing, or you can just have a conversation with them at some point. Be like, look, you guys don't have a tank. You know, you don't have someone who's going to absorb the damage. You have to play damage. smart. You have to play smarter, yeah. not harder. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Because even the even the, the druid tanking, you know, the downside to that is they don't have a good armor class. Yeah. Well, and then you also, I don't remember if there was a healer in the party, but it didn't really sound like it. So your druid's kind of filling in that healer role, too. So, like, if he's burning all of his spells to, like, heal himself in animal form, I think he's not... A bard, but yeah, 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 he okay. might not take care, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you need somebody to, to put the party back together again a little bit after yeah. some of the scrapes, too. And that could be done through someone, if, you know, you don't... You, you can have someone take the, uh, the, the healer feet. Or you could just that's a good, throw, that's a good sub in after battle, throw in, the people back up. I throw in like a magic magic item that gives them a healing, like maybe x t times a day or something yeah. like that, like three times a day. It can do a so. thing, like give them an idol that will like let them heal a few times a day. Yeah, that could be something they find along the way. So there's a few things to mitigate their weaknesses, but you don't want to just get rid of them. No, um, I, I wouldn't do that no. at all. No, not wholesale. No, forget that. You have to punish them for their choices as well as reward them. Yeah. <laughs> so there's going to be things that they excel in try and give them more things that they're going to excel in. But then, you know, also make it realistic when a whole bunch of guards show up because you stole something, you're not going to fight those guards unless they're sissies. You know, like, unless they're all... So they're heavily armored and chumps. have sharp, pointy things. Yeah. And, and they're, they're going to surround and you. And they've got them drawn and they're ready for a fight. Yeah, I mean, you could also put them in the, the party in a situation where they have to surrender. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, just in general, there could be just unwinnable, like, well, you know, the numbers are there. Well, surrendering could just be they get beat down and then get stabilized and get they wake up they wake up in jail. Well, I mean, that's the thing, yeah, it's a, it becomes a prison break game. Yeah. Like, yeah, for a couple of sessions. Which those types of characters would would be good for, you know, so they've got a nice sneakiness. Oh, uh, you got a druid that can turn into a damn mouse and just, like, <laughs> you know, wander around, find the keys. Or yeah, even the regular. Yeah, even the circle of the land drove can turn into a mouse. So. Yeah, and, and some delicious cheese. So, yeah. so as a recap, right? Weaken your monsters, less monsters, foreshadowing, so they know know what you know, what they should is what's expected. It's not expected. Battle control with a second wave if if it's necessary to keep a good fight. Play yeah. the strengths and weaknesses. Play the strength and weaknesses. Players have to you know realize what their characters are capable of as a party, and use good tactics. And you know, and then just tailoring your adventures to make sense for that party. Yeah, I so mean that sums it up. I think so. Yeah. All right. So if you feel we missed anything, or if you have anything else to add, you can uh, like, comment, or subscribe down below. You can tweet at us at Nerdicky at Twitter. You can also join the conversation over on Reddit. Until next time. Stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.